Welcome to the Meal Accommodations in School Nutrition Programs Training Module presented by the Maine Department of Education Child Nutrition Programs. This training will cover the laws and regulations governing when child nutrition programs are required to make meal accommodations and when it is at your discretion. The objectives for this training are that you will become knowledgeable of school meal program regulations as they relate to children with special dietary requests and become knowledgeable of the applicable laws to assure all children are able to fully participate in school meal programs. This presentation is based on USDA's guidance document, Accommodating Children with Disabilities in the School Nutrition Program. In order to operate the National School Lunch and School Breakfast programs, school food authorities, or SFAs as they're commonly called, must enter into an agreement with their state agency. This is completed as part of the annual participation packet at the start of each school year. As part of this packet, SFAs agree to comply with the USDA regulations ensuring children with disabilities have an equal opportunity to participate in the National School Lunch Program and School Breakfast Program. Both federal law and USDA regulations protect the rights of children with disabilities to ensure they have equal access to the benefits when compared with children without disabilities. Section 504 of the Rehabilitation Act of 1973 prohibits discrimination on the basis of a disability in any federal government program that receives federal financial assistance. The Americans with Disabilities Act says that recipients of federal financial assistance, such as child nutrition programs, must make reasonable modifications to accommodate children with disabilities. The Individuals with Disabilities Education Act requires each public agency to ensure children with disabilities have an equal opportunity to benefit from extracurricular services and activities, including meals. 7 CFR 15B is part of the National School Lunch Program regulations, and the purpose is to implement Section 504 of the Rehabilitation Act of 1973 as amended. Section 9A of the Richard B. Russell National School Lunch Act states that sponsors participating in the child nutrition programs must make dietary accommodations for children with disabilities. To summarize, school nutrition programs must make reasonable accommodations for children with disabilities which restrict their diet, and we must focus on ensuring equal opportunity for all students. So what is a disability? As defined by federal law, a person with a disability is any person who has a physical or mental impairment which substantially limits one or more of their major life activities, or has record of, or is regarded as having such an impairment. Examples of physical and mental impairments that may constitute a disability are listed on this slide. In child nutrition programs, we commonly see food anaphylaxis, metabolic diseases, and celiac disease. Major life activities, according to the Americans with Disabilities Act, Amendments Act, include, but are not limited to, those listed on the screen. In school nutrition programs, we commonly see disabilities which affect a child's major bodily functions ability to eat and breathe. Major bodily functions, as mentioned on the previous slide, include functions of the immune system and cell growth, as well as digestive, bowel, bladder, neurological, brain, respiratory, circulatory, endocrine, and reproductive functions. 
after the passage of the 2008 amendment to the Americans with Disabilities Act, which added major bodily functions as a major life activity, most physical and mental impairments constitute a disability. Here is a scenario directly from the USDA guidance manual. A child with autism is very sensitive to food textures and will only eat foods with a smooth texture. Must the school food service make a modification for the child? Yes, according to the ADA, any physical or mental impairment impacting the major life activity of eating is considered a disability. Some children with autism have sensory sensitivities and prefer food of a certain texture or color. They may require the same foods every day and need to maintain a regular routine. If a child's autism impacts their ability to consume program meals, the SFA must provide a reasonable modification. Now we're going to talk about meal modifications. Child nutrition programs must notify households of the process for requesting meal modifications, including that they do not discriminate on the basis of disability, the process for requesting meal modifications, who the contact person is for providing the modifications, when a medical statement is required for supporting documentation, any timelines you may have to process and implement the request, for example, if you have to train your staff on a new procedure or order special products, it may take a number of days to get them in. And the SFA's process for handling non-disabling modification requests. Programs are encouraged to make the process of requesting a meal modification as simple and straightforward as possible. By making it clear how to make a request, you will increase the likelihood of getting the information you need and reduce the amount of confusion for both you and the families. To do this, you may include information in your back to school packet, in student handbooks, and post information on your website. In situations where a student with a disability requires a meal modification that doesn't follow the meal pattern, a medical statement completed and signed by a licensed healthcare professional is required. Without this document, the meals would not be reimbursable. If a modification request can be met and still follow the meal pattern, a completed medical statement is not required, but it may be helpful as it provides clear instructions about making accommodations and it may discourage illegitimate requests. An example would be an allergy to one specific fruit or vegetable where the SFA can simply substitute another fruit or vegetable in the meal. Oftentimes, requests for accommodation consists of a brief statement. These usually don't contain sufficient information and therefore are considered incomplete. The medical statement must provide clear instructions telling you specifically how to make the accommodation. The written medical statement is no longer required to use the term disability. However, it must list sufficient information about the child's impairment so that you can understand how the impairment restricts the child's diet. Should list an explanation and instruction of how to make the accommodation and the food or foods to be omitted and or substituted from the child's diet. There may be cases when more information is required and you would need to work with the families to get this information. The goal is to ensure that a safe meal is provided for the child. The medical statement must include the signature of an individual who is authorized to write medical prescriptions under state law. In Maine, this includes a medical doctor, an osteopathic doctor, nurse practitioner, and physician's assistant. 
a sample parent letter, medical statement, and milk substitution request form can be found on our website as a resource for you. You are not required to use these forms, but they may be helpful to make sure you get a complete statement with enough information on how to make the requested accommodation. If the child's IEP or 504 plan includes the information required in the medical statement, or if the SFA obtains written medical verification of the impairment during the IEP 504 process, it is not necessary to also obtain a separate medical statement. To fully understand and implement the medical statement, you need to work with a team of people, which may consist of the school nurse, the district's 504 coordinator, parent, and possibly the student. Communication here is essential. If the medical statement you receive is unclear or incomplete, you will need to follow up with the family to get more information. However, waiting for this clarification should not delay you from providing the modification. Move forward as best you can with the information that you have. Question, is a food intolerance recognized as a disability? A food intolerance may be considered a disability if it substantially limits a major life activity. For example, if a child's digestion, which is a major bodily function, is impaired by gluten intolerance, their condition may be considered a disability regardless of whether or not consuming wheat can cause severe distress. Now let's talk about reimbursement of meals when making meal accommodations. The reimbursement you receive for a meal is based on the student's individual eligibility, regardless of whether or not they receive a modified meal or a regular meal. You may not charge children with disabilities more than you charge other children for program meals. If the meal modification is specified in the IEP, special education funds could potentially be used. Once a disability determination has been made by the licensed healthcare provider or the IEP 504 process, SFAs are required to provide reasonable modifications to prevent discrimination on the basis of disability on a case-by-case -case basis. Some common requests you may receive in school food service are requests to accommodate food allergies, portion size alterations, texture modifications, and milk substitutions. Once an SFA becomes aware of a child's food allergy, they will need to monitor products carefully to protect the child. When accommodating a food allergy, no food item offered to the child may contain traces of substances that may trigger an allergic reaction. For example, in the case of a peanut allergy, no food served to the child may contain peanuts or include peanuts as an ingredient. This means food labels for items children with allergies will consume must be checked for allergens. If a food label for a product served in the program does not provide adequate information, it is the responsibility of the school food service program to obtain the information necessary to ensure no allergic substances are present. This may be accomplished by contacting the supplier or manufacturer. School food professionals should exercise caution at all times, ensuring proper storage, preparation, and cleaning techniques are essential. The Institute for Child Nutrition has resources on their website, including food allergy fact sheets and a sample SOP for serving food to students with allergies. Question, the regular menu item for lunch at the middle school is whole grain rich pasta with cheese and vegetable toppings. Must the school food service director pre prepare whole grain rich pasta with lactose free cheese and vegetable toppings for a child with lactose intolerance? 
No. In a disability situation, the meal modification does not need to mirror the menu item offered each day. The SFA's responsibility is to serve the child a safe meal that accommodates their disability, not to mirror the program meal served that day. In the example used in this question, the SFA would not be required to serve a whole grain rich pasta dish and could instead serve a different meal that meets the child's modification request, such as a sandwich with whole grain rich bread. A meal modification request may include portion sizes either greater than or less than program requirements. When specifically provide, prescribed in the medical statement, you must provide the child with the portion as specified. In some situations, the medical statement may request a particular brand name. In most instances, a generic brand is sufficient unless the brand name is medically necessary. This can be determined through the interactive process with the child's parent or guardian. Offer versus serve allows students to decline some food components or food items while selecting a reimbursable meal. However, asking a student to use OBS is not an allowable way to make meal accommodations for a child with a dietary disability. Children with disabilities must have the option to select all food components made available to other children. For example, a child with celiac disease or gluten intolerance must have a choice of a grain item that is gluten free. Using OBS is acceptable for preference requests, for example, a vegetarian diet. Dietary accommodations pertain to reimbursable meals only and do not apply to a la carte foods and beverages. Now we will talk about meal service modifications. The requirement to make accommodations for students with a dietary disability applies only to meal programs that are available to the general student body. If special seating arrangements are required, programs should provide the most integrated setting appropriate, balancing the safety with the inclusion of the child. It is important to communicate with the family when doing so. Some children may need to track their dietary intake. For example, a child with diabetes may track their carbohydrate intake. In this situation, the SFA is not required to provide information for all program foods as it would be very burdensome to provide this amount of information. However, the SFA could develop a cycle menu with the child's parent or guardian, perhaps the school nurse and possibly the child if age appropriate, and the nutrition information could be provided for the foods on the cycle menu, reducing the burden on the school food service. Question. A student has a medical statement signed by a licensed physician stating the student has celiac disease and prescribes a gluten-free diet, including foods to be eliminated and substituted. Does the school food service program need to accommodate this request? Yes, celiac disease affects a major life activity, it's a bodily function, and rises to the level of a disability. Therefore, school food service must accommodate this physician's complete diet prescription. Now we're gonna talk about non-disability situations. So far, we've addressed accommodations for students with disabilities. You may also receive requests for dietary accommodations that may not qualify as a disability, such as food sensitivities or dietary preferences like vegetarian or vegan requests. Schools may choose to make accommodations on a case-by-case -case basis but are not required. For non-disabling requests, the accommodations must still follow the meal pattern, meaning you are offering the required components 
and you may use offer versus serve to make the accommodation. SFAs are encouraged to consider children's cultural, religious, and ethical preferences when planning and preparing meals. Accommodating children's preferences helps to maintain participation in your program. Variations, whether on an experimental or continuing basis, must be consistent with the requirements in program regulations in order for meals to be eligible for reimbursement. Acceptable milk substitutions must meet or exceed those found in cow's milk as listed on the slide. Meeting the nutrient requirements help to ensure participating children continue to have, ex have access to important nutrients that are found in cow's milk. SFAs will not receive federal reimbursement for a meal that substitutes juice or water for milk for a non-disability reason. However, if a child's medical statement indicates the child cannot consume cow's milk due to a disability and requests the child receives a substitute, the SFA must provide the requested substitute regardless. Acceptable fluid milk situ substitutions in non-disabling situations are lactose-free cow's milk, which is still cow's milk, but the naturally occurring lactose sugar is removed, and approved soy milk beverages that meet or exceed the nutrients found in cow's milk. Juice and water are not allowable substitutions in non-disabling situations, as they are not nutritionally equivalent to cow's milk. A parent requests the school provide whole milk or reduced fat 2% milk. Is this an allowable milk substitution? And the answer is no. The USDA requires that schools serve only low fat 1% or fat free skim milk. At the core of managing food allergies is a partnership with open communication for all involved with the child's care. It is essential for SFAs to work with parents and guardians to ensure the child receives a safe meal and have an equal opportunity to participate in the programs. Involving parents and guardians early in the process allows you to develop rapport with families and prevent miscommunication or misunderstanding. In addition to the USDA guidance manual that this presentation is based on, there are additional resources available to help you navigate meal accommodations. The Institute for Child Nutrition Fact Sheets, as mentioned earlier, and the CDC and School Nutrition Association have resources available as well. And don't forget that we are always here to assist. Each situation is unique. Feel free to contact us with any questions you have. This concludes our meal accommodations in school nutrition programs training module. For information about other school nutrition topics, please view our additional training modules.